Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview as well as some benchmarks on this video card from EVGA. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 660 FTW for the win Signature 2. So apart from the GPU, which is of course the GTX 660, this is a for the win version, which means it includes an overclocked GPU, a factory overclock. Speaking of which, the overclock is 1072 uh, megahertz on the core, 1137 megahertz on the boost, and that's as compared to 980 and 1033 for the reference model of the GTX 660. It's also the signature too, which means it has a custom made two fan cooling system by EVGA. This is a two gigabyte video card, so two gig frame buffer, uh, features SLI support, two way SLI I should say, DirectX 11, physics, 3D vision surround, and it's also a PCI Express Gen 3 card, as are all of the Kepler based GPUs from NVIDIA. Uh, those are based on the new 28, or I should say newer 28 nanometer uh, architecture, and the actual GPU in here is codenamed GK106, which is the same uh, GPU used in the 650 Ti and the 660. So apart from the SLI support, we uh, have some more features here listed on the back. So uh, we got GPU boost, of course, as mentioned. We'll go up to uh, 1137 megahertz, and it'll actually even go beyond that if your temperature stays within a reasonable range. So this particular card in my benchmarks got up to 1162.7 megahertz, uh, and that, that's, that's pretty good. So it's maintained that throughout, as long, again, as long as you're maintaining reasonable temperatures for the cards to make sure you have some good airflow in your case. You also get adaptive V-Sync, which is a really cool method of turning V-Sync on and off to optimize your frame rates, uh, minimize tearing and stuttering, depending on, of course, the refresh rate of your monitor. You also get NVIDIA surround technology support, so you can do surround with this. You can actually push up to four displays from this single video card um, by way of all the video outs on the back. You can use three of those for gaming. The fourth can be a companion display if you want to pull up uh, messaging or internet or anything like that. Uh, you get, again, Microsoft Direct X11 support, Physics, 3D Vision, SLI, CUDA, uh, PCI Express 3.0, OpenGL 4.2. Let's take a look inside the box. All right, so inside the box we have, in some uh, bubble wrap as well as a anesthetic bag, the video card itself. Let's see what else we got. Right, there's an accessory in here, I can feel it. Aha, there it is. And I think that's all, sure. Seems to be about it. So first we have a Molex to six pin PCI Express power connector. So if your power supply uh, doesn't have a little six pin PCI Express connector, you can use that. Although you should make sure at least that your power supply does have enough juice to support this video card. And EVGA is recommending at least a 40, 450 watt or greater power supply for the video card in your whole system with a minimum of 24 amps on the 12 volt rail. So bear that in mind. You also have the uh, DVI to VGA adapter. So if you're using an older monitor, monitor with an analog RGB uh, D sub connector like that one, you can use that adapter to hook it up. And finally, of course, we have a graphics card user's guide, which will sort of walk you through some basic stuff about graphics cards, if you're not familiar with it. It's got some different languages. I think this is German that I'm looking at right now. And then, of course, Oh, oh, we have a case badge that just slipped out of there. So a little EVGA case badge if you like putting the case badges on. Um, oh, some inserts. All right, so uh, this is PCI Express Gen 3 ready. Don't worry if you're uh, rolling an older motherboard that uses PCI Express Gen 2 because it's backwards compatible, of course, and it's a bandwidth increase that you get with PCI Express Gen 3. It will not hurt your frame rates if you're going with Gen 2. Maybe just like a tick or two slower, but really not a huge deal. Uh, and then, of course, we have a quick start guide. This is more specific to the 600 series of video cards, so uh, some more specific information there about setting up SLI and that sort of thing. We also have this, which says video cards get hot and don't touch them while you burn yourself. And then, of course, we have a driver and installation disk. So this is going to have the drivers, uh, which chances are there's going to be updated versions of this driver. Is this telling me what version's on there? Well, I can't really tell, but uh, don't use the drivers on here. Go to the uh, EVGA or the NVIDIA website to download those. Uh, you can also, if you go to the EVGA website, download their Precision X uh, overclocking tool, and you can use that to both monitor the video card as well as do some overclocking if you want to. The memory, the core clock, you can even juice up the voltage if you so desire. And next up, we're going to take a look at the video card itself. Now, you might notice some plasticky stuff on there. So just a moment, let me peel those off, and then we'll take a closer look. So here's a quick measurement of the card measured from the bracket. We are showing just a little bit over 9.5 inches, so I would say give it 9 and 3 quarters just to give yourself a bit of wiggle room. 
and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, also here on the top, you can see as part of the Signature 2 cooling solution, dual 75 millimeter fans, and those are gonna be pushing air down over several large fin arrays, uh, aluminum fin arrays, I should say. And also, uh, how am I gonna get you guys an angle? There, you can kinda see that. So see, we've also got some copper heat pipes and those copper heat pipes are gonna go down and they're gonna be transferring heat from the GPU itself out into the fin arrays and then the fans push air down over the fins, dispersing the heat. Here's another look at the heat pipe. So it looks to be uh, six millimeter heat pipes that EVGA has used for their cooling solution. Apart from that, it's a mostly enclosed fin array, as you can probably tell. Got a few openings here, a uh, little bit of space there at the back, so you're gonna get some air ejection out the back. And then EVGA on this side has the uh, larger size gaps that they've been including on the PCI brackets for their video cards, and that will allow a pretty fair amount of air to, uh, to proceed out to the back of your case, which is definitely most ideal to eject that warm air out of your case so it doesn't affect your other components. Apart from that, the general design, as you can see, uh, we have a black shroud, plastic shroud there on the top. We have uh, some textured goodness right there on the top. It's a very clean looking card. I really like the color scheme. Should match with the most um, computer color schemes that are out there. We have the signature logo right there, sort of a uh, brushed aluminum. This is actually a small piece of aluminum uh, that's on the card right there. And then on this side, which is gonna be the view that you get in most computers when the card is installed, you can see the EVGA and the GeForce GTX 660 logos. As far as the bottom of the card, we have a, uh, a sort of a almost matte I'd say it's maybe slightly reflective black PCB. Uh, you got a little rubber cover there on your SLI finger. As mentioned, this card is capable of two-way SLI. And uh, let me just keep that on there so it's protected for the time being. Uh, apart from that, as you can see, the PCB only extends about three quarters down the length of the card. Uh, other than that, you actually have another EVGA logo down there on the uh, extension of the shroud. Uh, up here at the top, you can see your PCI Express Gen 3 connector. Uh, again, backwards compatible. Physically, it is the same as uh, your PCI Express Gen 1 or Gen 2. Uh, so again, backwards compatible. Don't worry if you're not rolling Gen 3 yet. You can still get this video card. It'll still work just fine. Uh, apart from that, we also have your power connector over on this side. So six pin power connector, uh, as already mentioned when I showed you guys the adapter that's included. Some other specs for the video card, as previously mentioned, it's a Kepler GPU, the GK106, that's used in the 660 and the 650 Ti. Uh, if you step up to the 660 Ti and above, you'll get a GK104. If you go with a 650 or below, that's the GK107. It's based on 28 nanometer architecture. Uh, it's got 960 stream processors, and the GPU, by the way, is just on the other side of this little block of transistors right there. Uh, 80 texture units, 24 ROPs, a total of 2.54 billion transistors in there. Uh, again, the, one of the features of the 600 series from NVIDIA is the fact that you get the boost clock. So uh, the GPU is going to sort of underclock itself uh, when you're idling. So you won't be generating heat. You won't be um, basically putting any load on the GPU. Uh, when you put a load on it, it will uh, put that boost clock into effect. 1137 is the official spec. Again, this one here got up to 1,162.7. Did that consistently throughout all of my benchmarks. Uh, again, the memory, two gigs, 2,048 megabytes. Uh, that's running at 1,502 megahertz, 6,004 megahertz effective memory clock. And that's on a 192-bit bus. Gives you a total memory bandwidth of 144.2 gigabytes per second. And of course, we can't, our, can't forget our video outs on the back here. So uh, first off, we have a DisplayPort 1.2 out. We also have HDMI out. And then we have two DVI outs. Those are both dual links, so they can push 2560 by 1600 resolutions. Do bear in mind, however, that the top one is DVI-D. That's digital only. Bottom one is digital and analog. So if you're going to use that uh, DVI to VGA adapter, make sure you use it on the bottom connector there. Next step, we're going to be running into uh, and checking out my benchmarks. Uh, so I'm currently have this set up uh, on an Asus Z77 motherboard. Uh, we're also running a Intel Core i5 3570K processor, and we're also running some G-Skill memory running at 2666 speed. Uh, we're running the newest driver from NVIDIA. That one just released. It's 310.70. The max temperature that this got up to, since it does have a custom cooler, I will say it's running a good 8 to 10 degrees cooler than uh, any of the other EVGA cards or the reference video cards that I have seen. Uh, max temperature we saw in any of the tests was about 66 degrees Celsius. Most of the time it was running more around 60 to 62, which is really good temperature performance. Uh, that being said, let's take a look at the benchmarks.
And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the EVGA GeForce GTX 660 FTW for the win, Signature 2. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.